Do you want to make your own custom, posable, and resizable tabletop miniatures for free? Do you have dreams of the same mini in multiple poses, with or without base? I repeat, actual, scalable, sitting minis for mini cars, trains, sofas, etc. How about minis who come in a more unrealistic, ridiculous, but awesome anime pose? Maybe you prefer whole groups of minis that cost less than 10 cents each, fully customized weapons, armor, and clothes. Or you're, you're like me, that DM who absolutely has to have a mini for every character on the table at any given time, even if they're unpainted. You get the point? Applications are endless. And if you're interested in learning how to make some of your own custom character models with absolutely zero previous experience with 3D modeling, then this video is for you. everybody welcome to the dojo all of the minis you've seen and will see in this video were created printed and painted by me most of these minis took between one to two hours to print and five to 15 minutes to create digitally i know my paint jobs could be better but uh, please don't let that distract you from the possibilities of this really cool web app dm dojo is a channel dedicated to 3d printing for tabletops and miniatures it's not a mini painting channel after all at least until i get a little bit better either way Pretty cool, right? Today, I'm going to walk you through how to make your own custom tabletop miniatures. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to learn any 3D modeling program or software. You just need a few minutes in front of a computer, you know, a little bit of patience and access to a 3D printer. Optional uh, paints if you want to spruce up the minis of it. I'm showing both painted and unpainted here today. No matter how savvy you are with 3D sculpting tools, I promise uh, this is as easy as getting through any character creation in any video game, especially if you've been through like Oblivion. <laughs> and if you're one of the few folks who hasn't made a character in a, in a game or an app, I'll show you how later. It's easier than you might think. The free web app that makes this possible is called Desktop Hero 3D. I want to make it clear that I have absolutely zero connection to Desktop Hero 3D. I just think that this is something really cool that's allowing me to do some things with my tabletop games that would be pretty expensive otherwise and impossible in some cases. I also don't think people understand the possibilities of this web app. That's why I'm making this video. A real how-to of this app would take like two minutes and it's, it's how you use this web app that makes this such a game changer for the tabletop in my opinion and other miniature communities. I'll be showing you actual minis I've printed so you can make those connections and you can also see the quality that I've been able to get. Making your own custom 3D character model is normally very complicated. You need to learn complicated software or commission a 3D sculptor to make the specific model that you want. If you're lucky, you'll find a sculptor who's put out a model similar to the one you want and you can use that. The other option is to create and buy your own model on a web app called HeroForge, which I'll talk about a little bit later. That brings us to, here, to Desktop Hero 3D. You know, with this web app, you can make the model with all the features you want on it, export the STL file, and send it to a 3D printer, and boom, you've got a 100% custom mini for free if you don't count the cost of filament. And it's like five cents, 10 cents tops per 20 to 30 millimeter mini. Once you export the model, all you have to do is prep it. If you aren't sure how to prep a model for printing, you can watch a video I made in that too, right here. If you don't own a printer, you will still want to keep watching. There are a lot of places that provide access to 3D printers, public libraries, school libraries, any friends, coworkers with 3D printers. Surprise you, you probably know somebody that does have one. And of course, paid online services. I recommend checking libraries and with friends first before online paid services. They can be very expensive. I've included a link below with pretty comprehensive list of all the 3D printers available in public libraries in the US for those who live here. I mentioned earlier, the only other web app I've seen that works like this, where you create a model, get a file and print it is HeroForge. And a single 3D model costs $10 for the printable SDL file from them. The $10 per mini might not seem like a lot, and it really isn't for the quality model they provide, to be honest, but $10 will only buy me a single pose and there's no sitting option. I can't, I can't pose my hero to be sitting if I wanted to. I will admit I can be cheap when it comes to STLs because look, there are so many folks selling great sculpts of both mini and terrain. 
you know, this is a real barrier of entry for people like me who love making different characters, but you just can't commit to the cost of a truly custom 3D character model. You know, I was the guy who made like 10 characters in EverQuest and in World of Warcraft, none of them at max level, because I just loved having different people. Uh, you know, I love the different armor sets and I just loved being different characters. It's probably why I like being DM. I get to be those people in different ways in NPC form, right? Can you imagine a person with my personality type, you know, sitting with something like Hero Forge? So many cool character creation options, but a single character STL is just $10 each. Scary investment for somebody like me, especially if I want to print multiple minis or different poses or basic minis like villagers or NPCs. Well, what I've done today would cost over $100 just to, just to print out if that was the case, but my sculpts would be better. Quality of HeroForge web app is much better than Desktop Hero 3D currently, and it's way more polished, but it isn't free. And I just won't print those extra minis that can really bring my table and scenarios to life. I also think a lot of people know HeroForge already, so I'm not going to talk very much more about it today. I just want to make it clear that I did consider this when I made this video, and I think a lot of people watching this today will know about it. But for those who don't, I want to make sure I'm thorough and cover all the bases so you understand why I feel strongly about Desktop Hero 3D bringing a really good, uh, innovative product in our community right now. As I said, I am very excited for Desktop Hero 3D to come to the 3D printing tabletop scene. Uh, you know, here we have this completely free alternative to the only real 3D character creator for 3D printing. It just went public one month ago and it's a new web app. It's already added tremendous value to my table, right? And as of right now, it's not a perfect program. I will go over some of the brutally honest concerns that I have and issues that I experienced when I used it, but I've yet to find something with this much flexibility that's available for free. Something else I feel I need to say at this point, while 3D printing any model, including Hero Forge models on the 15 to 30 millimeter scale, it can be difficult to get super high quality prints from an FDM printer. In fact, this comes up all the time, you know, whether FDM printers can get good qualities for mini, you know, and I'm a believer that yes, you can get good quality minis, but that quality is still not good enough for some people. I've shown and I will show my prints throughout this video so you can be the judge for yourself. If you think my models, not my paint job, look bad or they aren't up to your standards for whatever reason, then Hero Forge STLs printed on either a DLP or an SLA printer are probably gonna be a better option for you, a better product for you. Printing minis on an FDM printer at 15 to 20 millimeter height is going to leave prints like this. Unless you're printing at 50 microns, that's 0.05 millimeter layer height or below. 28 to 30 millimeter prints can look like this though. So I'm being open with you here. If you see the test prints and just aren't impressed, you can stop watching and I'll understand and I won't be hurt. <laughs> That being said, DLP and SLA printers will have no problems printing desktop Hero 3D files with the same level of detail you see in the slicer. But if you only have access to an FDM printer, like me, or you like making free characters, character and flavor, then I still think desktop Hero 3D is a really, really awesome option. Expect a quality like you'll see throughout this video, provided you do the right prep work and slicing. You have nothing to lose by using it, so why not? At the end of the day, FDM printers are the cheapest and most consumer friendly printers out there right now. So that's what I'm covering. That's what I show in this video. Now we've covered that. <laughs> I've given some pretext. The rest of this video will include a how to. I'll show you some of my test results and I'll give you an honest review of the current state of desktop Hero 3D. I will cover the beautiful and the ugly. Let's do this. Go to desktophero3d.com. Immediately you will see a posed character model. As of right now, no account is required to make a custom character model. That's right, no email collection as of right now. Awesome. It's very simple. You click on the part you wanna modify and you select it. Just like most other modern character creation screens and apps, right? If a body part isn't on here, click more to reveal the tab. If you wanna save your character, you click on the character tab and that'll bring up these buttons here. Then click export character or save as desktop hero character file. You can load your character by clicking the same button above it that says load character. They have a variety of options, bird heads, snake heads, cobalt heads, various armor, lots of different cloak options, a couple different types of hair, and of course, a ton of different weapon and item assets at this time. That's basically it, right? You spend some time looking through the assets, playing around with the poses and choose what you want after playing around with it. A word of caution, 
You may have to repair your STL file. I had to do it with every single file I've printed from them. And some gun assets still didn't repair after a run through NetFab and Microsoft Windows STL repairs window web app. This reflects in the final prints and the small 20 millimeter scale I used for some of these minis only made that even harder to print. This isn't the fault of my printer or even my prep. It's just that the item is just too small and the resolution wouldn't allow for the item to print at that size. So the slicer and the printer do the best they can. I also decided I was going to try to push Desktop Hero's existing assets to their limit and try to create as many different characters as possible and try printing them at different scales and for different purposes. I even had a friend request I make him a very unique mini, a high elf Sherlock Holmes with a rapier and a dagger and a snooty attitude. So I did my best and these are my results. Super anime pose guy, posed like every amazing sword wielding character in every anime, ever. He didn't print too bad, but you can see the posing made some parts of the model stick out unnaturally. In some of the smaller areas, like his hands, the prints were difficult as well and lost some definition. This is a post-apocalyptic dude. Devin from Odd Light Creation sent me a mock-up he made to see what it looked like, and this was literally me printing someone else's character. Like, if you have a friend printing it, for example, the itty-bitty gun in his hand was too small for my printer to handle, so it suffered. Uh, the BFG in his other hand, however, printed very well. The Warband. This Warband was inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics. You can see my inspiration there. I used to, to draw from the color scheme. I used these minis to try and learn how to do cartoony eyes and to try different skin techniques and to get practice painting whole units at a time. This guy was modeled after a certain famous Pokemon master. He didn't make the cut. Um, I'm sure a painter could do <laughs> some magic, but he didn't make the cut for me, so this is definitely the ugly. <laughs> Sherlockul Holmethus, elven crime detective with a rapier. He was a quality test print between Simplify 3D and Cura and a test of Cura's new tree supports. On both models, the rapier and hand broke off. I liked the Cura print better than the Simplify 3D print, so I used some glue and glued the arm back. I also cut a little paper clip that I cut and angled it to be the rapier blade. The Badlands crew. I, re I recently discovered Badlands and thought, you know, why not make characters that you can pose to be sitting in cars, standing in the back of cars, or walking, like on a base? While Desktop Hero 3D assets were a bit limited for the post-apocalyptic modern uh, minis, we all know how hard it can be to find uh, sitting minis in 15 to 20 millimeter scale, so I tried anyways. You know, these are the minis that came out to, that I sized to 20 millimeters. Some needed to be a tad bit smaller, and each test car had unique ability, had unique qualities, so fit wasn't the same. You know, they can be easily scaled down in your slicer to fit whichever mini car or train you want to put them in. Even with the lack of detail, I felt these guys would still look great on the table from a distance and paint it up. My point in doing all these tests is to show you the possibilities that exist with this app, you know, even now in its buggy state. I can see this being great for war gamers who play games that are era agnostic. I can see this being great for the dollhouse community. You can make a plain mini, pose it to wherever you want in your house, and scale it up to 112 scale. Print, and there you go. Custom custom mini or custom, custom figure. Two hours later, you've got it. You know, with some creativity and a little bit of modding, you can make an incredible variety of custom minis. Even without the modding, you can do some really, really cool stuff. Sure, the detail is not going to be perfect, especially on those 15 to 20 millimeter prints on FDM printers, but you can always print it on a, on a DLP or an SLA printer if you really want that level of detail. It's still completely free. The Desktop Hero 3D community has already submitted amazing assets since release in February, and it's only going to get better. I'm hoping those of you who see us, join us, and contribute to the asset bank. <laughs> Overall, I'm, I'm proud with how these minis came out. They're up to my standard for the tabletop. I know there are others who can get better prints and paint better, but we all learn in the dojo and that's what this channel's about. With these models I'm showing, I tried a lot of different things to get better prints so they'd print as well as possible. Sometimes there was nothing I could do. The print would suffer just because of a simple lack of resolution, i.e. my printer doesn't have the level of detail required to print the small part accurately. You'll need to do the same if you want to get good prints out of any 15 to 30 millimeter minis. So go into this process knowing that you will need to work your printer to see what works. If your slice looks good, you got to keep trying working with your printer settings. If your slice looks like this, even after trying to repair, nothing you do will make that print perfect. Just making that clear.
shift a little bit and talk a little bit more about the app to add some context, something unique about Desktop Hero 3D, all of the assets and the presets are submitted by the community. Everything from armor, weapons, clothes, hairstyles, every, everything, it's all crowdsourced by former Kickstarter backers and the community. A lot of this is left over from the beta, but since I last used this a few weeks ago, lots of weapons have already been added, specifically for sci-fi. This means you will have a mix of both amazing assets and lackluster assets. To submit an asset, pose, or character, you do need to create an account. You just click contribute and it will be submitted for review. Sometimes to add the asset you want, you'll have to search for it. Like backpacks, for example, are listed under the wing section and there's currently no search function. Keep in mind, Desktop Pure 3D just went public in February 2018. It was successfully kickstarted in 2016, so it's been in development for quite a while. It just It's just one guy developing it, from my understanding. So I get why it's taking so long to get where it is right now. It's also like most other apps that just got out of beta and needs quite a bit of work. For example, when changing assets, you have to make sure the part is highlighted. Otherwise, you might have two types of hair or overlapping armor pieces. Submitted assets vary in quality and sometimes just don't line up right. Some of these assets flat out didn't slice well for me, even after trying to repair them. This is what a bad asset would look like when you preview your sliced file. You also have to get creative about how you use certain assets, which has led to some amazing things like the snake character user Melik uploaded and created. Uh, you just got to get creative. You can also scale everything, including individual body parts in the app, which is powerful but it's also scary if you don't know what you're doing like me there's no undo button right now and it also makes it so you have to to resize bones and joints to get things like dwarves and halflings right now in short using desktop here 3 d is kind of like using microsoft paint to to make a masterpiece if it's what you got and you work with it you can make some pretty cool things it can feel limiting when you're comparing this to a premium product like a photoshop another example Poses require a lot of customizing right now. Some work really well and others just don't. You can manually adjust the pose to whatever you want, but getting the right pose can take some time and lots of squiggly adjustments. Some assets don't work well with certain poses and I've yet to find a way to fix this with certain things like capes and cloaks, even though I love the capes and cloaks, you know, but one pro tip that's really helped me with these poses, uh, press the button, start moving the joint, and then release the keys on the keyboard. So press the button, start moving the joint, and then release the keys on the keyboard, then left click to lock it in. You make a custom pose, it sometimes also makes the blockiness of the model really obvious. This can add just a little more of that plain or mannequin look to your models that shows. I know it seems like I've just highlighted a lot of reasons why Desktop Hero, Desktop Hero 3D is not good software right now, but I don't feel that way. I think that this is a really awesome tool for the tabletop and miniature community, and I just want to be honest here, and I'm grateful that I discovered it relatively early on. It's a versatile tool that has understandable and for the most and the most important part is fixable flaws. Truth is, I, you know, I've worked with much buggier software than this, and I think it's doable as long as you go into it knowing you'll need to be patient and work with it. The desktop here at 3D Facebook page, the owner, I'm assuming it's either the developer or someone on his team, posts frequently on the Facebook group taking polls of the community all the time, uh, and it's generally pretty engaged with the audience, with the people using it. You know, what more can I ask uh, from, a, from a developer of a web app like this who probably has another job on the side? There is no question for me. I will be using Desktop Hero 3D in my tabletop moving forward. I, I already used it in my game and introduced uh, this guy. Introduced this guy along with a few others as captured slaves. Even unpainted, guess who my players fell in love with? The crazy shirtless bald guy with a ponytail and a beard I printed from Desktop Hero 3D. And he was only primed, that flat black. Some of the with some of the minis I printed, right? Within a few hours, I had a unique warband that I was able to paint up with the color scheme and a composition based on one of my favorite video games, Final Fantasy Tactics. I would never have been able to find this kind of a cohesive group through minis like Reaper Bones. <laughs> Definitely not at this price. Uh, you know, less than one dollar total for all of that warband, and a warband from Warhammer or some other miniature maker would be way more expensive. In short, I would never have been able to make this cool little unit, uh, and it was a lot of fun to create and paint, and I'm going to love putting them down on the table when my players get to a part of the story where they can encounter them. What's more is that 
nobody else has these, just just me. Uh, I made them and I handpicked everything except the pose in some cases. That is just such a cool concept to me and one I considered a luxury for those with extra money to spend before I discovered Desktop Hero 3D. If the Desktop Hero 3D team stumbled on this video, first of all, thank you so much. Your product has brought me and my table significant joy. Second of all, I know I'm not, you know, a popular YouTuber or the most important voice among users, but I felt I, I couldn't be critical of the product without giving clear suggestions for improvement that I think would really address some of the issues that I talked about today. I would like to see in the pipeline for development of Desktop Hero 3D search functions to find specific assets faster. So when the community adds more assets, it'll be easier to find better assets. You know, I love the emo hair, but I think you guys can do better. Please keep adding high quality assets on top of the community to content. To, uh, simplify the UI. Simplify the UI. Iron out some of those big bugs and make posing uh, easier and less wonky. That being said, I am so excited for what the future has in store for Desktop Hero 3D. I hope that the tabletop and miniature community will embrace this web app and give it the support it needs to make free quality customizable minis a continued reality for everyone. I hope after watching today's video, you give it a shot and make some cool characters. If you, uh, if you make someone neat, I'd love to see them. Until next time, happy gaming and happy printing.